Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. Let's give our God some praise and worship. Hallelujah. That is due to his name. It's another Sunday morning, another day that the Lord has kept us. And we want you to help us call on the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus. We believe that there's power in his great name. Come on, let's lift him up. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great. Come on, say we love.
us Lord I know we can't gather in the church building but we can still uplift the name of Jesus we can still praise the name of Jesus we can still glorify his mighty and righteous name somebody tell the Lord thank you hallelujah the Bible declares that many are the afflictions of the righteous but we know that God will deliver us from them all hallelujah have I got a witness that's why we call him faithful that's why we call him holy that's why we call him righteous that's why we call him all that we need Woo. listen said I call you faithful your name is faithful you are so faithful to me yes Lord I call you faithful your name is faithful faithful you are and faithful you'll be yes Lord we testify that you are faithful God we can always call on your name come on help me say I call you your name is your name is faithful. you are so Yes, Lord, we love to call on your faithful name. Your name is faithful. You are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, I call you awesome, God. Yeah. Your name is. You have been. Jesus. If you tried him and you know him, shout thank you, Jesus. 
Hey guys, it's Pastor Tuck here. Yes, I know some of you have been asking, what are you guys doing in the community? Listen, we've been doing so much in our community uh, since uh, we haven't been able to congregate together. So I'm just gonna take a moment and share with you some of the things that we're doing uh, right here in the city of Clayton County in Forest Park. Uh, we've been feeding our seniors. We've been dropping off food each week uh, since the pandemic has started. Um, and also we've been feeding 700 plus individuals and about 200 families each Saturday. So your giving and your tithing and your support has afforded us to be able to do this. But guess what? We haven't even stopped there. We're even supporting Kenya. Uh, we're even uh, supporting across the water, which is crazy. So I just want to take a moment and just say thank you to all of our supporters, to all of our online givers, to all of the people that believe in this ministry. We have continued to do what we need to do in the community, and we could not have done that had you not uh, been a part and been a, a, a donor and said that, listen, I want to continue to support my church even though the church is closed. So I thank all of you who have dropped your tithes off, who have texted your tithes in, cashed app your tithes in, mailed your tithes I appreciate you send your tithes by somebody else and drop it off at the church. Listen, because of you, we are really rocking hard in our community. So in this moment of giving, which there are several ways to give here in our church, you can give via text, you can give via cash app, you can give via check, cash, all of those things. You can even drop your payments off uh, here at the church. Uh, but I'm just so grateful for you guys and I'm thankful. So uh, here in Living Faith, there's a couple of decrees and a couple of things that we say that I'm gonna share with two people uh, that may be new to us and might be sharing with us online today. One, uh, a big declaration we say here in the Living Faith Church is that you are assigned to your church and your church is assigned to the community. I want you to say that with me. I am assigned, that's right, I am assigned to my church and my church is assigned to my community. Now, now that you've said that, now we're gonna decree or place a decree over your offering that you're about to, to sow. So say this with me, this is my seed, uh-huh. God bless me with this seed. And today I'm planting this seed. Guess what? It will, it shall, it must reap a harvest in Jesus' name. I can't wait to see you in person. But until then, I will see you online. God bless you. Yes, Lord. We serve a big God. Yes, Lord. He's bigger than any mountain that we can face. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, clap. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's do it right here. What a mighty God we serve. Here we go right here. Say, I believe. That's it. It's my season. And I believe, yeah. Whoa. Said, I believe. It's my time. It's my I time. It. Come on, tell them what you feel. This break. Breakthroughs in the room. Anybody anticipating? Come on, just shout it right here. Anticipating. anticipating. Tell them God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Oh, 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 oh. So let's. So oh, let's. Yeah. My God is He's working, working miracles. miracles. Just for. Just it's gonna be, hey, yes, so. Oh, said it's gonna be.
entertaining. Yes, Lord. But it's gonna be. Hey, but it's gonna be. Said it's gonna be. But it's gonna be.
Hey guys, it's Pastor Tuck here, and welcome to Living Faith, the church that makes you fall in love with church all over again. I'm excited that you guys are streaming with us on this morning. Listen, do me a favor and hit that share button if you're watching uh, via Facebook. And if you're sharing with us via YouTube, uh, if you can share with some people, tell them they can go to their smart televisions and, lit and type in Living Faith, and you can meet us there on YouTube Live. Listen, we are excited to be sharing with you on this morning, and I am so grateful uh, that all of you have come to check out uh, what we're doing here in the Living Faith Church. I'm so excited. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, subscribe. Uh, if you have not checked us out on Facebook, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And so I'm excited that you guys are with us on this morning. Let's pray and then we'll jump into the word. God, we thank you uh, for all that you've done. We thank you for your power and for your anointing we thank you god for your grace we thank you god that you have never left us that you have never forsaken us and god we thank you that now as we are preparing to partake of the word we pray god that lives will be changed i pray god that the person that is watching on this morning that is depressed that that felt like giving up god that when they hear your word that they will leave with strength that they will leave with uh with, with power that they will leave knowing that better days are ahead of them god we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do and god we give you praise and we give you honor in jesus name amen hallelujah why don't you gather your kids your husband your wife your dog your cat why don't you gather everybody together and tell them that the word uh, is going forth here in living faith so uh this morning we're going to talk about something uh that i think we've all struggled with um, in our lives uh, at one point or another and so we're going to be talking about friends you know there's a song that says friends mm, mm. how many of us have them friends y'all don't know nothing about that but anyway so we're going to be talking about friends uh, on this morning the importance of friends and uh, just being grateful of friends we're going to talk about two guys Paul and Silas. So for those of you that are taking notes, we're going to be coming from Acts 16 and 25. Come on, Acts 16 and 25. And we're going to be talking about Paul and Silas and the importance uh, of being friends, the importance of having friends in your life. Uh, before I read the scripture, uh, I know many of you, just as myself, uh, had people that you thought that were going to be friends. Uh, you, you thought you guys were going to be friends for 
forever. You thought you guys were going to be friends your whole life. Uh, but, but some things happened and some things transpired, and now you're no longer friends anymore, which leads me uh, to these three things or the three people that you were encounter uh, as you grow and evolve in this life. When people come into your life, there are three things, and many of you have heard this. This is a very traditional term. Uh, this is something that's very pragmatic, and people have heard it you know, over and over again. Uh, but there are three friends that you meet in your lifetime. Number one is a reason. Number one, a season. Number two, a lifetime. Come on, I'll say it one more time. There are going to be three friends that you meet. Uh, and again, many of you have heard this from your parents or for other people. There are people that you're going to meet for a reason, a season, and a lifetime. So you're going to meet those three individuals. And I'm here to tell you that the lifetime uh, person is that person that you are going, you rarely meet, that you rarely bump into uh, during your walk in life uh, and even on your spiritual journey. Lifetime friends are really hard uh, to come by uh, because they, there has to be a certain camaraderie uh, that you and that lifetime friend have uh, where they can not only uh, love you uh, when you're in your place, but they can also love you in that low place. So make sure you write that down. The three friends that you meet in your lifetime are reason, season, and lifetime. Now let's go to the word. Acts 16 and 25 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They were singing praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed and the keeper of the prison walking out waking up out of his sleep seeing that the prison doors he drew out his sword seeing that the prison doors were open he drew out his sword and he would have killed himself supposing that all the prisoners had fled but Paul, and we'll stop at 28, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do not harm yourself for we are all here. So friends, so, so let's talk about friends, the importance of friends. So you got Paul, um, who's this guy who's starting churches all over the world. He's just starting churches everywhere. He's, he's getting in trouble. He's risking being beheaded. He's risking his life being taken. And this isn't the first time Paul has been arrested. But you see here in the scripture, Paul is now locked up. But he's also not just locked up, but Paul is locked up with his friend. What no better person to be locked up with? What no better person to be in trouble with than a friend, somebody that loves you, somebody that cares for you? The Bible says that Paul and Silas were not arguing with each other about why they were in jail. But the Bible says, that Paul and Silas were praying together and singing songs, which means they had not a worry in the world because they understood where two or three touch and agree that God is in the midst. And so Paul and Silas are in jail. The Bible says that they're praying and singing songs and they don't have a care in the world they're just there praying and singing songs just saying you know what you know what what God has for us is for us and we're just gonna wait this thing out so so when I'm thinking of friends and I want you to write this down when I think of a friend or somebody that's a friend number one you have to have friends that are willing to fight for you come on write it down you have to have friends that are willing to fight for you so 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 one of my favorite scriptures in the bible is when peter uh actually jumps out and i need you to catch this is when peter actually jumps out and he cuts the ear off of the soldier when the soldier tries to jump on jesus you always need that friend that's a ride or die that says you know what I'm going to do this no matter what. I'm going to jump in no matter what because I am that fighter. I'm that person that's going to fight for you. And let me tell you what friends do. A real friend will fight for you even when you can't fight for yourself. And I don't just mean naturally, but I also mean on the spiritual side. When you are weak, your friend is there to cover you until you can recover. 
That's a good word. That's a good word. That's a good word. Let me pause right there. Your friend is there to cover you until you can recover. If you have friends that are taking more, that are taking more, and you're giving out more than they're, come on, you're giving out everything, they're taking everything away from you, and, 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 and they're never giving anything back to you, then that's probably not a friend that's going to fight for you. If you have a friend that you call them and you say, you always, they always want to tell you how they're doing and they never ask you how you're doing, that's probably not a real friend that you need. But you need a friend that not only fights for you naturally, but you also need a friend that is going to fight for you spiritually. A friend that is simply will be there to say, you know what, I'm going to fight for you no matter what it is. I'm going to stand in the gap for you and push for you and no matter, because you listen, you need somebody to cover you when you down. Come on. I, I, I know a lot of you want to act like that you're strong all the time and you got it all the time, but sometimes you need somebody to sit in prison with you, sit in the dirt with you and say, you know what? I'm going to sit here with you until you come out of this. But the problem with some of our friends is that they like you when you clean, but they can't handle you when you dirty. Wow. They like you and love you when you're on top. But what happens when I slip, when I fall? Come on, what happens when I'm in the dirt? Can you get down in the dirt with me and pull me through this and help me through this? And see, this is the thing. Sometimes the only way you're going to help somebody out is that you got to get dirty. And you got to have friends that are willing to get dirty with you. Come on here, somebody. So write this down. You got to have friends that Fight for you, not just naturally, but spiritually. Number two, you got to have friends that respect you. Come on. They got to respect you and love you. See, this is the thing that I always say to people. You know, it's one thing to respect me in my calling, but it's another thing that you still respect me even when I'm in my mess, that you still love me even when I'm in the low place or even when I'm in a place that's hard and it looks like this is not where I'm supposed to be. So you have to have friends that respect you, that love you, that care for you, that are fighting for you, that are right there. And see, what I appreciate about Acts 10 and 16 with Paul and Silas, what you see is a man that respects Paul enough to go to jail with him. To say, I respect you enough to sit with you in your low place. I respect you enough to sit with you in a place where it doesn't look good, where it doesn't feel good. I respect you enough to say, you know what? I know you messing up right now. I know you raggedy right now, but I respect you enough and I know that God has called you to do something great and to do something mighty. So let's roll back through our points. Number one, you gotta have a friend that fights for you. Number two, you you got to have a friend that respects you. Come on, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. And if we rewind back a little bit further, we said you got three friends, reason, season, and lifetime. Come on here. Reason, season, and lifetime. Some of you, some of you are trying to make a seasonal friend a lifetime friend. Some of you are trying to make a reason friend a lifetime friend. And now let me go even further. Some of you are sleeping with your assignment. Some of you are sleeping with what you were assigned to. You were never Never assigned to sleep with it. You were assigned to teach it, save it, and move on. But some of y'all thought, oh, that's my husband. That's my this. That's my dad. Listen, if I can share something with you, stop sleeping with your assignment. Wow. Wow. I know some of y'all in y'all house like, whoa. Listen, stop sleeping with your assignment. God assigned you to that man. That ain't your husband. Hello, somebody. God assigned you to that woman. That's not, that's not your, that, that, and, and, and some of you are sleeping with the assignment and you're missing your blessing because you thought your assignment was your husband. You thought your assignment was your wife. So guess this, reason, season, lifetime, and then you have to have friends that are willing to fight for you, and then you got to have friends that are willing to what? Respect you. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, you got to have somebody that is willing to respect. Everybody can't deal with you when you don't let your hair down. Everybody can't deal with you when you in your mess. Everybody can't respect you in your calling and in your mess at the same time. But a real friend can deal with you in your mess and respect you in your calling. Wow. Come on. 
a real friend can deal with you in your mess and respect you in your calling. I need you to catch that. Come on, come on. I need you to catch that, that, that a real friend deals with you in your mess but still can respect that you are called to do something great. Still respect that you are called to sit in a seat that no one else is called to sit in and no one else is called to do. Now, 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 now let me tell you what real friends do. Real friends also include you, which means they don't leave you out of stuff or forget you, but they include you in stuff. They make sure that you're in the right room. They are not jealous or envious of what you have. But they are a compliment to what you have. See, see, oftentimes I've I've had friends who were jealous of what I had. They were not, they they were envious of what I had. They weren't a compliment to what I had. They were jealous and envious of what I had. Listen, this is good stuff because some of you uh, on this morning are wrestling with some friends that you've been trying to hold on to, not understanding that that friend that you have right now in your life is a seasonal friend. God never meant for them to stay with you for a lifetime. God never meant for them to stay with you for this season. And listen, they're there for a season. I've said this a hundred times before. Some of you need to start checking permission slips of the people that are getting on your bus and you'll find that some of them don't belong on your bus. And you will also find that some of them don't belong on this next trip and on this next journey that God has placed you on. They don't belong in with you in this next season but people will include you real friends will include you in whatever it is that's about to happen next and whatever change is about to transpire see it's one thing to say I love you but it's another thing to say I include you listen if you love me you will include me and I will be in the know of all of these things that are going on you gotta have friends that are willing to include you my next point is that you gotta have friends who are ready to encourage you see we all need encouragement and we all need strength at certain times in our life and at certain moments in our life because I need somebody that is going to encourage me not discourage me not put me down not but encourage me that I can do this you don't believe me let's go back to the word Bible says and at midnight Paul and Silas Acts 16 and 25 Bible says at midnight Paul and Silas listen to this Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs praises unto God and the prisoners heard them listen to this the Bible says that because Saul Paul and Silas were together Silas encouraged Paul and Paul encouraged Silas so therefore since we're encouraging each other let's just sing songs let's just be excited and let's just praise God together so you gotta have a friend and somebody that you are connected to to say you know what let me encourage you I know you're down I know you're in the place that you're in but let me encourage you let me put you let me tell you what you can do listen find you somebody that can encourage you through everything that you are going through listen this is a good word today because somebody need to hear this if you are surrounded around people that are always talking negative I got one a couple of words for you run let me say it one more time. If you're around people that everything that comes out of their mouth is negativity, 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 I already know I'm broke, so I don't need you to tell me I'm broke. I already know my children are a mess. I don't need you to tell me my children are a mess. I know my car is raggedy. I don't need you to tell me my car. I know I live in the hood. I don't need you to tell me that I live in the hood, but what I need you to speak to me, I need you to speak life to me. I need you to be able to say, you know what? One day your son going to be saved. I need you to say, you know what? One day your husband going to be saved. I need you to say, you know what? One day this is going to change for you. Can you just encourage me for one moment, one time? Find you somebody that is going to encourage you and not put you down and not talk about, I already know what I'm going through. I already know what I'm dealing with. I need you to encourage me. Woo, come on here. I feel like running because if more people would use their lips to encourage people, we would have less suicides. We would have less people that are depressed and less people that are sad. Paul and Silas encouraged each other. 
by praying and singing songs. Silas could have complained and said, look, bro, you got us in this jail. We stuck in this jail and now we going to die. Now what we going to do? But the Bible says that Silas encouraged Paul and he said, give me your hand. I know we locked in chains, but let's sing a good old hymn. Let's sing something that's going to get us through. And the Bible says that they sing songs and they encourage each other. Listen, you better find somebody that has encouragement on their lips, that has strength and life on their lips. Come on. Y'all know the song, friends. Mm, mm, mm. How many of us have them? Mm, friends. Mm. Y'all know it. Come on. How many of us have them? Yeah, Y'all know it. Y'all know it. You ain't been saved that long. You ain't been saved that long. Come on. Come on. Come on. You ought to, y'all go find it on iTunes. It's somewhere. Hello, somebody. So, so the friends, let's let's roll back to our points. They will fight for you. They will respect you. They will include you. They will encourage you. Come on. And my last point is that friends will stand by you. Come on. Now, now, now you gotta have somebody that says, listen. I'm ready to stand by you, hell or high water, thick or thin. I'm going to stand beside you no matter what it is and no matter what you're going through. I'm going to stand beside you. In this case, Silas said, you know what? I'm going to sit right here beside you in this jail, and I'm going to wait till God deliver us. But you know what? We're going to sing songs, and we're going to praise God even in this jail. You got to have some friends that are willing to stand with you that will say, you know what? I'm going to sing songs, and I'm going to pray with you until you come out of this. Some of you need to take a moment, take a pause right now. Go through your friend list on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Come on, Snapchat. Come on, LinkedIn. Hello, somebody. Who else am I missing? Twitter. Go through your friend list and say, you know what? I don't need these individuals because, number one, they're not willing to fight for me. Number two, they're not, they don't even respect me. Number three, they haven't included me in anything. Number four, they haven't encouraged me. And number five, I don't remember the last time they stood by me. If you're calling them more than they are calling you, that might be a good indication that they may not be a good friend for you. Wow. That may not be a good friend for you or somebody that you need. See, see, friends are individuals and people that says, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to be right there for you no matter where you are. Listen, we are all going to get in a place in our life where we're going to need somebody to help us and pray us through. And you better find you somebody or find a friend, listen to this, that can fight for you, respect you, include you, encourage you, and stand for you and stand by you and say, listen, you can't quit. You can't give up. You can't stop. You got to keep going. So let's, 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 let's conclude with this because I got a few more minutes on the clock. So, so Bible says that Paul, Silas, they, they, they're, they're there to fight for each other. They respect each other. They, they, they're standing by each other. And don't you know that there is power in unity? And don't you know if we would spend more time learning how to appreciate people instead of talking about them and putting them down and picking them apart and picking the negative things out of them, can you imagine where we would go and where our lives would be and where the church would be today, where our companies would be today, where society would be today if we would just learn to encourage each other and stop trying to put each other down. Let's roll back through these points and let's get out of here. Come on, let's cut across the field. So let's go back, 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 let's go back. So one, we started out with a song, Friends, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how many of us have them now? But I said to you, there are three friends that you're going to have in your life. Number one, they're going to have friends for a reason, a season, and a lifetime. Stop making seasonal friends life time friends. God done broke y'all up already. They were only meant to be with you for this season. And it's okay. You got to be able to accept that. That you got to let them go. They might have been in your life for this reason or for this moment, but you got to let them go. Reason, season, lifetime. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And so what do friends do? Friends fight 
for you. They respect you. They include you. They encourage you. And they stand by you. If your friends that you have in this circle don't have these elements, I'm going to submit to you to start looking for some more friends. Woo! Y'all don't hear me. Start looking for some more friends. Find you somebody that says, I'm going to cover you until you recover. Find you somebody that says, listen, I got your back even in the low place, even in the place where you can't do what you need to do for yourself. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to stand for you. I'm going to do just like Paul did with Silas or Silas did with Paul. I'm going to sit right here in this dungeon with you until God pulls us out. I'm going to sit right here in this dirty place with you until God pulls us out. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull you out if you can't pull yourself out. I'm going to help clean you up if you can't clean yourself up because I am your friend. I believe in you, I love you, and I care for you. And let me tell you something, the Bible says, let brotherly love continue. Because you got to have that friend, that person, that individual that says, I'm going to stand with you no matter what. I'm going to push you no matter what. And so today, make sure you got friends and make sure you understand why people are in your life. People are in your life, reason, season, Lifetime. I'm going to say it one more time and we out. Reason, season, lifetime. Now do me a favor and I want you to make a declaration right there in your home and I want you to begin to say something with me. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come on. Listen to me. I want you to begin to make a declaration right there in your home and I want you to say something with me. Are you listening? I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, I will not submit to people. I will not make individuals that are seasonal in my life i will not make individuals that are seasonal in my life lifetime people but i will understand and know that when the season has ended that i will transition and i understand come on say it with me i understand i understand that today that there are people in my life number one for a reason number two for a season and number three for a lifetime come on can i pray with you on this morning if you don't have a church home and you say you know what I've been watching you guys online and I want to join that church even though we can't congregate together but I just want to be a part of your online community if you would love to be a part of the living faith family the church that makes you fall in love with church all over again won't you put your name on the screen and say I would love to join here and somebody's gonna get your information and somebody's going to reach out to you and tell you about our great church and tell you about the next steps that you can do here in the church. Now, I want to do a call to the person that is unsaved, that is watching this live that says, oh, I don't really know who Jesus is and I don't really understand that friend thing that you're talking about. If you're unsaved today and you don't know who Jesus is and this is literally your first time knowing or hearing about his name, won't you write right there I want to be saved come on write it right there our elders are going to be praying with you because and they're going to be leading you through the prayer of faith the prayer of serenity they're going to be leading you through that prayer come on leave your leave your I want to be saved come on leave your information right there come on we're almost there we're almost there come on into that person that has backslid to that person that is in a backslidden state and said I want to be restored I want to be set free I want to give my life back to God I want to come back to him come Come on if that's you I want you to write that on the screen come on I want to be restored come on I want to be restored there's somebody there to pray for you I want to be restored God is going to restore you God is going to bring you back to your first love God is going to bless you come on and my last call is to the person that says I know Christ I've been saved a long time but I've been struggling with this friend thing I don't even know God who my friends are I can't trust nobody let alone I can't even trust myself and today I'm going to pray and declare that God is going to rebuild your trust and God is going to send you a support system and you're going to send you somebody that's going to stand behind you and support you and push you come on can you pray with me God we thank you on this morning for your power and for your anointing and for your 
grace and God I lift up that brother I lift up that sister that is discouraged in this moment that says I don't have any friends I'm alone I'm by myself and God I just feel destitute and I feel like I need somebody to wrap their arms around me and tell me that they love me God today we speak strength and power over them we speak your anointing over them I speak your grace over them and Lord today I declare that you will trust him like never before we declare that you will fight like never before we declare that God will send people that will cover you until you can recover we declare that people will stand with you and fight for you and we declare that God will give you the ability to be able to disciple the reason the season and the lifetime friends that he have placed in your life and I speak that you will be encouraged sister I speak that you will be encouraged brother and I speak that better days are ahead of you and I speak that you will trust God like never before come on won't you pray with me I speak that God will come right there in that room and touch you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet I speak that the anxiety that you feel on this morning will be loose from you in the name of Jesus I speak that the depression that has been kind to keep you bound will be loose from you in the name of Jesus and I speak freedom over you come on will you pray with me I speak freedom over you I speak over your marriage and I speak that communication will open up right now in the name of Jesus I speak over your children and I speak that the silence that they've been giving you the silent treatment that they're gonna talk to you and tell you what's going on I speak to the anointing I speak to the provision in your house and I speak that the power of God is coming to endure you right now in the name of Jesus and God we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise come on come on say it with me God we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise come on say it with me God we give you glory we give you honor you better pray with me and we give you praise God do it right now come on God do it right now God come in the room right now God give us what we need right now God and we cover this under the blood because the blood covers the blood heals the blood delivers and the blood sets free come on we out of here the blood covers the blood delivers and the blood sets free come on come on the blood covers the blood delivers and the blood sets free come on we out of here the blood covers the blood delivers the blood sets free come on lift your hands and say it with me the blood covers the blood delivers and the blood sets free come on god bless you